Madam Temitayo Konu is a big-time trader in Lagos, Nigeria's commercial metropolis. She's one of perhaps hundreds of Amazon merchants who control tens of millions of dollars worth of trading across Africa. Big-time traders like Madam Konu are called Mama Benz in Francophone Africa because they usually drive Mercedes-Benz cars. In Anglophone West Africa, they're often referred to as Cash Madame. Madame Konu left her law profession in 1988 and opened a stall in Okiarin Market. With its over 12 million inhabitants, Lagos has many such markets scattered across the metropolis. Okiarin Market is a typical example of Nigeria's dynamic, informal sector that distributes locally manufactured as well as imported goods across Africa. There are probably 10 big-time market women in Okiarin Market today who do large monetary transactions which are generally not captured when the wealth or GDP of African You're countries is calculated. That goes past these machines on a daily basis. I have two shops in Okiarin like this. There's one just about two doors away. I have another one in Mushi, and um, there's a fourth one in a place called Trade Fair. These are all products which are very, very fast moving. And in the next two days, you won't find anything here. The shop is going to be empty. Yes, on Tuesdays, for instance, I have my customers from Togo and Kotonou. On Wednesdays, we have our customers from, um, from the east, from the north. On Thursdays, we have customers from as far away as Mali, as um, Burkina Faso. Multinationals like Nestle, Cadbury and Coca-Cola access Africa through these market women's expansive distribution network. It's amazing the amount, the size of money that's been made in that uh, market on a daily basis. I'm sure they can sponsor the uh, budget, the Nigerian budget uh, from that market. Um, they do big business there. And throughout history, these women have had both the economic clout in their communities and wielded a lot of political influence. When Madame Konu speaks, people listen. Have you seen some of those women in their environment? They call the shots. Madame Kono begins her day with a workout, a way of calming the nerves and gearing up for a hectic day ahead. Because I do business which is very stressful and um, I usually have to relax this way. This morning I have jogged five kilometers. I am on the treadmill now in the last 30 minutes. I am exhausted. But in totality, the benefit far outweighs the exhaustion. After the gym, Madame Kono uses the latest technology to stay abreast of market developments. But we do as much as 150 million in a month. So we have a lot of customers who buy goods from us from all our locations. Generally, we bring out all our reports, our expenses, everything is imputed into the system. So before I go to work, I would sit down to take information, then which allows me to be able to plan what I have to do. With an annual turnover of more than one billion naira, the equivalent of about 15 million US dollars, Madame Kono receives daily visits from bank managers eager for her big business. This sector of the economy is not recognized. We are not protected in any way. You recognize the importance. And that is why today you have more than 50 different commercial banks in this market. They recognize that, but the government does not. And so we are very, very vulnerable. You are coming here now to offer temporary overdrafts just to assist us because you know that you contribute to your own um, turnover and you make money from us. 
But what we're saying is that government does not recognize us really as having any input in this economy. I think definitive factors about the informal sector is the fact that they are seem to be beyond government regulation, they seem to be beyond the arm of the law, particularly in terms of taxation. Because they are hiding, they, they cannot now come out and complain because they're trying to hide their income from the uh, uh, due taxes that they should pay on it. You go out there, you find that the local governments collect taxes from these women on a daily basis. They pay their taxes. I pay tax for the company. I pay individual tax. We want to be able to do our business in a very conducive environment. We don't want all of this harassment. The government should come into the market and make friends with the market women. There are many educated market women out here in the market today. Despite feeling unappreciated by government, market women continue to forge ahead. They employ and mentor Nigeria's youth. I am interested in developing and bringing up the youth so that they can be, um, they can be useful to themselves in the future. We have a problem now in this country whereby when they graduate, there's no job. And what I'm trying to do and to impact to them is that you can actually be anything you want to be. Even when a lot of our present rulers were growing up, it was their mothers who were the big traders, who were into big trading, and who were paying school fees and sending them to other ends of the world to acquire the best of education. I want my children to be very well educated and I'm trying to train them to be whatever they want to be, but fully armed, um, knowing that the world is a very tough place and they have to be tough. Despite all the hurdles in their way, these resilient and resourceful market traders are modern day heroines at the forefront of big business and high fashion. So watch out world, Africa's market women are a true example of the economic empowerment of women.